Alrighty then, welcome back. Uh, RBA, RTA, RDA, atomizer. What do all of these things mean? Well, everything that you use in uh, vaping gear is uh, has at its, one of its components an atomizer. Uh, that is what actually makes the vapor. So uh, what is an RBA or an RTA or an RDA? Rebuildable dripping atomizer is an RDA. Uh, you've got a coil, some cotton, no means of having a tank or a reservoir other than what is in the deck. You put it, some juice on there or hook it up to a squonking box and boom, you're good to go. Very forgiving in how they wick because generally speaking in RDA you wick those really, really loose and uh, you're providing the juice on your own. You don't have to worry about it uh, siphoning or uh, you know uh, pulling the juice through capillary action from a tank. Uh, what is an RTA then? Same concept with a tank around, under, or on top of it, you know, depending on how the uh, RTA is uh, designed. Uh, Got to worry about your wicking a little bit more because capillary action is actually what's pulling all this stuff in. RBA, what is that? Rebuildable atomizer. Today, what the RBA refers to is a little bit different than what it was before. Uh, the RBA before was uh, basically what we consider an RDA right now. Uh, where you just have an atomizer, you rebuild it, and uh, you drop some juice in there to an unbridged or bridged uh, little tiny coil. But today the RBA refers to a coil housing, a pre-built coil housing, uh, that screws into an atomizer or a clearomizer or something to that effect uh, that uh, utilizes typically uh, pre-built coils. Uh, something like the sub-tank, a perfect example. That was a lot of people's uh, first introduction to it. Um, I just did a review uh, a few days ago, about a week now, uh, of the uh, Togo Mini with the CLRBA base. Uh, a couple of folks have asked me to show them my wicking tutorial. I didn't do it in that video because I just wicked it and I was still kind of figuring it out and getting my feet wet with it. And I didn't want to undo all my work. Since then, I've rebuilt the CLRBA close to a dozen times. And I've got the process pretty well down. So uh, after this introduction, we're going to go ahead and dive down directly. I'm not going to do any other uh, up top sections. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and before we get to that part, gut this thing out as far as the wicking. I'm going to leave the coil in place and we're going to take the wicking tutorial from that point forward. So yeah, uh, you're uh, hopefully afterward, your CLRBA will be able to do that. Now, a little caveat to this, it's going to be a vertical coil because similar to the review, I have as of yet not been able to figure out a horizontal coil or a wicking with this thing. I get a gurgly, floody just juicy mess no matter what I do and sometimes I get dry hits along with the gurgly floody juicy mess I haven't been able to figure it out properly yet I know a lot of folks online have maybe check out one of their tutorials I tried it didn't work for me uh, anyway I'll go ahead and cut this intro short we're gonna dive down and we're gonna take a look at the CLRBA and a real building tutorial so stand by check it out Alrighty, and we are down here for the tutorial. Uh, before we get started, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. A uh, set of tweezers, just like that, might come in handy. Some kind of sharp, pokey instrument like this. A little tiny screwdriver would do just fine. High-tech scissors. High-tech anti-leak implement. And a little tiny bit of cotton. That's all you really need. Now, uh, I did cheat a little bit uh, off-camera. And what I've done, I've actually put a brand new coil in there. That's a 28 gauge stainless steel 316, um, 5.5 wraps, comes out to about 0.6 ohms. Um, I went ahead and pre-installed it and I put a little bit of cotton behind it right through the legs. Um, just to kind of make that part of the, my life easier. Nothing special about that. You don't have to worry about terribly overpacking it, just make sure you leave the inside of the uh, coil uh, opened up. Um, looks like I can do some adjusting there on that. There. So yeah, if you look down the coil, it's wide open. You should be able to see the deck. If a little bit of stuff is sticking out in the back, that's fine. All right. So drop everything and then let's get started. Um, still got a little bit of juice on this, so it's a little slippery. Now, traditionally, something like this, what you would do, um, first of all, you'd have a horizontal coil and then you just have the, uh, the wick going through the coil and right down into these juice channels. Or with a vertical coil, what I would do is pre-wrap it, 
and have one leg sticking out and I would stuff another piece of cotton inside of the wrap and have it going down to the other side to fill these juice channels. Um, pfft, have not been able to get that to work at all. Dry hit city plus gurgling. So uh, what I have done through trial and error is um, brought back the way that I wick the uh, one of my first RBAs that I had, the Subtank Mini. And uh, I loved vertical coils and the way that I wicked it was this particular method. So uh, go ahead and just Screw your, um, oh, another thing. When you put that little bit of cotton there, make sure those juice channels are freed. Uh, you, you don't want anything sitting on top of it right now because of what we're getting ready to do. If you need to stuff it back toward the, the, uh, the posts, that's fine. So let's uh, reassemble this. And I always go backwards with the threading until I hear a little click. Center down real good. Take a look inside and make sure the coil isn't touching any metal. Good to go. Anyway, from here, take a little tiny piece of your cotton. That'll do. Matter of fact, that's probably too much. A little tiny piece like that. Just shred it with your hands. Uh, the scissors are optional here. And what we're going to do with this, while it's really loosely packed, is just put it on top of these wick channels, because you can see them from the inside. You just want to cover these up. You don't want to pack it in there. You don't want any of it to stuff out of the uh, outside of the hole. So just get that in there. And if I don't get this on camera, I'm sorry. Very hard to do this. I think I'm getting this. Just nice and loosely packed. Make sure you leave the top of that coil open. And you're barely going to put it down on the bottom. That's it. And from the bottom, I don't think it's going to show up on camera. Yeah, just barely. You can make out the uh, wick inside of that juice channel. Same thing on the other side. Nice and loose. I mean, there should barely, barely, barely be any cotton there. Basically, what you're doing there is creating a dam for the um, surface tension so that it just, or it creates surface tension rather, so that the uh, juice doesn't just flow in there open. That's it. I mean, there should barely be any cotton in there. And if you have any doubt, just get your little pointy implement and get it right in there. Poke a little bit. You should see that cotton move pretty freely. Just make sure it's nice and loose. Nice and loose. Happy trees, happy trees. Oh, wait. Wrong show. Anyway, that's your first layer. You've got those uh, wick channels covered up. You don't have anywhere near enough cotton in there. Now, the rest of this cotton also has to be similarly loosely packed. So, snip off about, oh, well, I don't know, that much. Maybe there. And then you got this little square here. And what we're going to do is just peel it in half. Because you don't want to use too much in one shot. I just lay it right on top. Stuff her in. Like I said, make sure the top of that coil is open. And this is why I put the uh, cotton behind the coil to begin with. And you're going to pack this stuff pretty loose as well. We can worry about neatening it up in just a minute. You just make sure, want to make sure it gets in there and that it's loose. that you're completely surrounding that coil. Because if you don't surround the coil, what's going to happen is it's going to get a hot leg up there. The rest of that coil is going to be cooled down by the juice that is uh, being wicked up through the uh, cotton. Now, inside of the housing here, you're going to notice you got all this threading. Oh, there we go. You might be able to see it better up there. Got all this threading. Make sure it's clear of the threading by just taking your little implement. Let me get you a good angle here. Taking your implement and just uh, kind of barely, gently tucking it down. I'm going to take it off camera for a minute and you know, tilt it toward me so I can see what I'm doing. Get it away from the threads because this is what actually connects this to the chimney. All 
All right, now for good measure, what I always do, if you look at the back behind the posts, get a little bit of a cavity there. That much, that's it. This particular part, you can pack that full, you can stuff it, whatever. I just like to get a little bit of cotton in there, just in case there's a little bit of floodage. As a matter of fact, I probably should have done a little bit more. This part, you don't have to worry about it being pretty, you don't have to worry about doing this, that, or the other. Just get some cotton in there, that's all. That's just to stuff this thing, uh, and I find that it actually helps with the uh, turbulence of the air. You want all that cotton to be about the same level, that way when the air comes down, it just hits the uh, top of the coil where the vapor's uh, pulling out, and it brings it up to your mouth hole. Uh, the reason this is important with the uh, CLRBA is that there's no air restrictor here. You don't have this little chunk of metal sitting in the middle that guides the air down the sides and then back up. Uh, you're, you're relying basically on your method of wicking and what you do and how you do it. And with the vertical coil, uh, something I've noticed versus the horizontal coil, other than the fact that I can actually get this to work, is that the uh, vertical coil produces a much, 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 much airier draw. Um, this thing is wide open. Anyway, there we go. Inside of this thing, loosely packed cotton. I can still see the metal deck underneath. You got a ton of cotton packed behind the uh, post. That's fine. Everything else is loose. So, high-tech juice bottle. I just want to test the wicking out. So with the uh, dry cotton, and uh, forgive me if this is not in uh, camera shot, put a drop in these juice channels. Now keep in mind, that first drop is going to take a little while to wick because you got to get that capillary action going. And it looks like it's doing just fine. Yep, doing what it's supposed to do. Oh yeah, that's wicking beautifully there. And if it's not doing exactly what it's supposed to, get your implement there and just poke it just barely. Not enough to really move the cotton. I mean, I didn't even put enough in there that it's saturating any of the wick. Speaking of that, not a whole lot. Put a drop there. Drop there. Drop there. And if it gets on the threads, oh well. Those threads are going to get nasty anyway. Maybe another drop there. Now this part here, I do just because you got all these little flyways of cotton. And this makes them much more visible. And also for the purposes of tucking that cotton in along the side of the well, that makes this easier. Now this thing is nowhere near saturated enough. So what we are going to do at this point is... Uh, I'm going to pause the video because I don't have my device with me, and I'll be right back, so kind of bear with me. Alrighty then, video editing magic, yay. So here's my device, and, you know, at this point you might as well top her off. One of the things I do like about this device is that it's easy to fill. One of the things I don't like about this device is that it's messy to fill. Uh, I do wish, uh, on my wish list of things that uh, they had done with the Togo Mini, I wish they had gone the route of the uh, Cubist Pro, where the uh, this whole top assembly comes off and then it has a top cap that threads off separately, so that I don't have to pull the whole plunger system out uh, to refill the system. Okay, so, I mean, this thing's been sitting for about a minute now, and, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good and juicified. So, nope, oh, got a flyaway thread there. Let's get that off. All right, so... Get this thing threaded on, and this part does get a little messy. Grab that top knurling, get her on there pretty good. Plunge her in, dejuice your hands, because you're going to need them to do this part. Like I said, th th this is probably the worst part about this setup. Opened up airflow, now let's close her down. Pinhole. Give it a couple good primer. Primer pulls until you can just barely taste uh, the juice in the air coming through it. And then I'm going to start putting my implements of destruction away. And that gives this about 30 seconds or so to actually wake up. Yeah, like I said, I'm pretty impressed with the um, 
uh, the Togo Mini. Uh, one of the things that I wish that they had done, uh, like I said, was imp implemented some sort of a better top fill. Uh, rather than just having to pull the whole plunger out. Uh, not a big fan of that. Really, really not a big fan of that. Um, aside from that, though, I'm pretty impressed with it. So anyway, uh, let's uh, go ahead and give her a vape on this little tiny, tiny pinhole. I'm probably not going to get much of anything out of it. Got five bars, so I should be, in theory, getting around 4 to 4.2 volts, but I have been vaping this a little bit today. She's making a little bit of vapor. Let's open her up. A little bit of vapor. A little floaty. Maybe I over-primed it. So, to fix that, open. Oh yeah. It's gonna be a little poppy. Probably the first two or three pulls. Oh man, this throw tip is pretty substantial. Oh yeah, I just clouded everything up. Anyway, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, that's how you wake this thing. So yeah, let me go ahead and uh, pause, go back up top, talk about it, and we'll get out of here. All right, so bear with me. Stand by, we'll be right back. Alrighty then, we are back. Up top with the freshly wicked, and freshly coiled in fact, uh, CLRBA. Um, yeah, you saw the process. Uh, for the life of me, like I said, I can't get a horizontal coil to work in this thing. It's a floody, gurgly, dry burning mixture of just a shitty mess. Can't get it to work. So yeah, the CLRBA, it's not the easiest uh, RBA to work with. Uh, I mean, to be perfectly honest, the uh, Kangertech um, Subtank Mini RBA, uh, the second generation one, uh, that one worked significantly, significantly better than this, but you got a lot more room on this one. Uh, I, get, I do have to say that. So how does it vape? Well, wide open, still a little gurgly. You know, uh, I did over flood the, uh, the coil. That is one of the problems with this, uh, plunger style system. And you'll notice that even if with the coil that's running beautifully, when you have to re, uh, when you have to refill the tank, you plunge it in there, you're going to get a little gurgling the first few hits. I got a little more than normal just because I just, uh, primed the coil. But yeah, you get tons of vapor out of this and the flavor is just on point. And like I said, that little pinhole right there, that's where I vape. And, uh, no dry hits, no flooding. The gurgling was all on me, you know, just from over priming the coil. I think I went a little too aggressive with the, uh, the back of the, the cotton I had behind the, uh, the velocity deck. And it's all oozing out of there. So kind of on me, but it's dried out significantly now. And, I mean, if this thing was going to dry hit, it would have long since done it. Now, something to keep in mind about the CLRBA and uh, the uh, CL coils in general, the CLOCC coils, is that they hit like a freight train. I mean, nicotine-wise. I mean, the throat hit is substantial. This is uh, about a 70% uh, VG, and I'm getting uh, 3 milligrams, and I'm getting a substantial throat hit. I, I would think I'm vaping 6 milligrams 50-50 right now. It's a great vape though, and if I go down to a mouth to lung, something else I noticed about this, because how, of how airy the um, CLRBA is, you know, without that air restrictor, I get very little vapor, but the flavor's freaking fantastic. No vapor. Good stealth vape. And the flavor's just on point. So for a mouth to lung, I generally do this. I just leave like this little nubbin. Sorry, my lighting's a little funky. I leave that little nubbin on both sides, and that's it. Maybe even a little less than that. Get a little more vapor out of it, and a little bit uh, looser draw. Now, if you start vaping on this, and uh, you do experience a little bit of a, hey, this is kind of leaning toward a dry hit here, and you know, all of us who have hit, uh, had a dry hit know that taste and you know uh, the symptoms of when it's coming. Uh, close her off completely and do that, literally. Two, three times the most. I probably just flooded it out, honestly. A little bit, not too bad. And 
and that takes care of it. Uh, this particular wicking job that I just did, fantastic. I mean, right from the get-go, it vaped phenomenal. So yeah, put a little bit of cotton right behind the coil, just to go right in between the deck and the coil. Uh, that way you've got some means of wicking the back of the uh, coil so that you don't get a dry or a hot spot back there. Make sure that cotton goes uh, underneath the coil, but not underneath the actual opening of the coil. That You want to see metal when you look down at it. Make sure it doesn't trail into those uh, juice channels. At that point, you're done with what you're doing with the deck open. Close it off. Now close the deck completely off, and then loosely pack a little tiny, you saw how much I used, a little tiny bit of cotton right above each of those juice channels. It's very loosely packed, and uh, then loosely pack some more cotton all around that and fill up the back of the uh, uh, velocity deck. That just gives you a little bit of a uh, gurgle and flood protection. Test out the wicking like I did with a perfectly dry coil. Put a drop in each of the juice channels, and it should suck in there after about five seconds. You know, Remember, the cotton's completely dry. It's not going to immediately uh, start uh, flowing in there because the capillary action hasn't gotten going. Uh, but after that five seconds, you should be able to put a drop in and it pulls it in. If not, just like I said, get that little screwdriver, just barely, I mean a fraction of a millimeter, just touch the cotton. Uh, basically what you're wanting to do is change the shape of the cotton that's, as it lays against that opening so that the surface tension doesn't build up on there, you know, the surface tension of the juice. If you leave this sitting for a while overnight, it should be fine. You shouldn't be getting any gurgling, but when I pick it up in the morning, I always close it off. One pull. That's it. One dry pull really low, and then she's ready to go. Yeah, so um, that's it. Uh, once you get this figured out, it's actually a pretty simple um, wicking method. It's just a pain in the ass to figure out. It, it really was. I mean, I was pulling it, what little hair I've got left out trying to figure this out. Uh, yeah, this, uh, it works well once you got it figured out. I'll say that. God, it's got a learning curve. And for the life of me, at this point, I cannot get horizontal coils to work reliably. That said, I still recommend it because once you got the vertical uh, coils figured out, and I think it's probably a better vape with this plunger style, uh, just because there's no air restriction on top. But once, once you get the uh, vertical coil figured out and you wick it properly, it's a phenomenal freaking vape. I mean, wide open. And this is a 0.6 ohm coil. You get vapor for days out of this thing, out of a non-regulated or quasi-regulated mod. Close it off just halfway, it's still wide open. Tons of vapor still, and the flavor just went through the roof. So anyway, yeah, no more of that. Um, I'm going to have a link below to the review for the uh, Togo Mini that I just did, so check that out. Uh, you can see how I you know, talked about this system. Great little guy, I'm still loving it. Um, 0.5 ohm coils are still shit. I mean, the, the, the pre-built 0.5 ohm coils are just absolute shit. I, I don't know how they work in any system. They flood. They just flood, no matter what. Uh, 1 ohm coils rock. 1.5, I don't have my hands on those yet. I don't think I'm going to get them just because I've got this uh, non-regulated system. I'm not going to be able to control the wattage, and I'm going to end up getting about a 10 watt vape at full charge. Not my speed. But if that's your speed, hey, maybe a way to go. Yeah, so uh, I'm pretty impressed with this thing, and uh, if anything else changes, I'll go ahead and do an update at some point. And if not, hey, just go with what I said uh, based on my opinion. So anyway, uh, nothing about advocacy. Check out the links below. See you later.